Hi everyone, here I am again. I've been offline for a few months due to personal reasons and I will not tell you in this video what happened but maybe sooner or later I will tell you. But I can tell you this, I'm back again and stronger than ever before. And I have lots of cool stuff for you. And today I will show you how to implement buttons in Telegram using an ATEM. As you know, Telegram is one of my favorite ways to interact with NA10 workflows and if you can implement or use buttons in it, it's even more powerful. So this is the workflow we're going to make today. So it's a very, very basic workflow and let's see what it does. So hello. Cool. Uh, what are my options? Aha, and here you have the button. So I press button one, ah, you push button one. Button three, ah, you push, push button three. So this is the result of what we're gonna make today. And you see the workflow is very, very easy and simple. But I haven't found any video on YouTube how to do this, so I had to figure it out all myself. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can do it yourself. And you will be surprised how easy it is to do this. So let's start building. So I'm going to make this inactive. And for this tutorial, we're going to start from a very basic Telegram workflow. Uh, you receive a message and an A10 sends a message back. So it's very easy. So execute this workflow. Hey, yeah, a message back from an A10 workflow. So this is the one. See, a message back from an A10 workflow. And now we're gonna add some buttons to this message. And again, as I said, it's very easy to do. So you open this note, and here when you see re where you see remark mark reply markup, instead of choosing none, you choose inline keyboard, and then some new options open. Add keyboard row, and here you have add a button. Surprise, surprise! We're gonna call this. button one and we're gonna give this a field or a value option one so this callback data is the data that will be sent back to the workflow so we're gonna add another button and we're gonna call it button two how boring that is but it will work for this. And we're going to give it a value option 2. Okay. And now we save this. And now we're going to execute this workflow again. Hey. I see. Here we have our buttons, button 1 and button 2. So if we click button 1, you can click it, but nothing happens. And if we execute workflow, button 1, what happens? Nothing. It doesn't send a message back. And here it's still waiting for a trigger event. If we send a normal message, hey, oh, hey, then it's sending the same message again, like this. So, how can we capture the value that is sent back to an A10? So, as I said, the button is sending kind of a message back to an A10, to the an A10 workflow, but it's not a normal message, it's kind of a callback. So, how do we capture that callback? we need to have a new trigger for that. So we go to Telegram, Telegram, and here we choose the triggers. 
and in here you have on callback query. Okay, execute this step. Let's see what happens. Button one. And this is the answer we got back. So again, all the details about it and the ID, the message ID. And at the end, we find the data that has been sent back. So the value of the button that has been sent back. So we can also put this in a reply. So send message, telegram, oh, send message, where is it? Send a text message, send a text message. And the chat ID, we find it again in here. If we chat, the chat ID is this one. And what we got, oh. this is the choice you've made. And here we're going to put the data. Okay, and if we execute this tab, this is the choice you've made, option one. Okay, it looks, I'm going to change this because I don't like it. Okay, so now it is working, we have we ca capture a normal message and we capture the um, callback message. Okay, but now comes the problem. I save this and we're going to make it active. And here it says workflow could not be activated. Too many requests retry after one. This means um, and it then is triggering or checking two triggers at the same time and that's too much um, there can only be one telegram trigger and how do we sort this or solve this it's very easy um, let's take the first one trigger on this is the genius part here you can choose two uh, two options here you can also choose callback query so now it listens to a normal message and also um, it listens to what we send back um, via that button. So this one is no longer needed. Okay, now execute workflow. So, hello, hello. Aha, it's sending the buttons as expected now check button click button two and nothing is happening because here push button one push button three but here nothing is happening so let's go back to our executions see nothing special is happening so let's try it again Problem in it, send a text message. Here it is. And what's the other message? This one doesn't exist. And this one is the chat ID from here, from the scheme that we got from when we sent a text message. It's different, or the JSON or the place is different than when we receive a callback. And how do we solve this? We're going to do it very, very ugly. Here we make an if statement. And we copy this one. Let's say we know this is the chat ID when we receive a normal message. So we do. Uh, this is a number. And if that number exists, Execute step. Okay. 
So if that number exists, it's a normal chat message or normal text message and it goes to this. If that one doesn't exist, it means it's a callback from the button. So then we can do like this. And now if we save it, and now we can make it active, because there is only one trigger. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now it should be active and working. So, hello, hello. And it's not working, and why not? Let's check it. If, aha. Da, da, da. It's a number, but it was expecting a string. So, debug in editor. And again. Okay. We're going to delete this one. Telegram trigger, chat ID, number exists, number exit, nope, it's a number exists okay we're gonna do it like this so now we're gonna save this hey 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 uh, we're going to a message back from an A10 button one hey the choice you've made is option one. But now the problem is every time we send a message, new message, it will reply with this one, a message came back, back from any 10 workflow. How do we solve this? It's very, very easy. So again, with an if statement, you can put some agents there, but for this one, an if statement is okay, let's say, if the, the telegram triggers, so the text, let's say, if the text contains choice, then it's gonna send the buttons and if it doesn't contain choice, it's going to send a normal message back. Send text message. Okay, it's the same as this one. Hey. Hey, hey, this is a normal message back to you, message back to you, and sorry I need to end, but no sponsorship, okay, and if we save this, hello, hello, Hey, see, there's a normal message. Um, what choice do I have? And now it's answering back with a bot with button, so I'll choose button two. Cool. Yeah, hey, Peter, you're the best. No. <laughs> Boring answer back. So as you can see, this is a very, very basic workflow. 
Um, you can put in some AI agents here. You can disable the buttons if you want. Because now the thing is button one. It keeps on being an option. So you can also say if you click button one, it's no more or you cannot accept it as an option. Button two or disable button one or option one and option two. But this is the basic workflow you need for this one. So I would say have fun with your buttons in Telegram and please like and subscribe and in a few days I will be back again with a new one, with a new video as I told you. Have a nice day and have fun. Bye.